Hi, hi everyone. So uh, today we're gonna be making a really cool uh, recipe. It is a Japanese mochi recipe. Mochi, of course, meaning rice cake. And usually in Japan, you can put rice cake in things like in, in savory preparations, in soup. But most of us, I think, know it for its like sweet preparation. You usually like fill it with red bean or like people do it with ice cream. And if you've never had mochi before, so it's made primarily from uh, glutinous rice and, and you just pound it and it gets nice and kind of like chewy um, and, and squishy. So it's, it's a new, it's definitely a new texture for people who haven't tried it before. Um, this countryside recipe though is kind of quite cool because it's very, it's very rustic. It uses kind of whatever vegetables that you have around. So what we're going to be doing is making it with um, some rice flour, uh, some azuki beans, which are naturally kind of quite quite sweet already I think and provides that extra fiber and, and whatnot and then we're gonna be using sweet potatoes so uh, in Japan they'll use either the purple potatoes or the white sweet potatoes but um, if you guys just have you know your orange ones which is what I will be uh, making today we're gonna add it all in so you're gonna get all of these like really nice um, flavors into your mochi. Today I'm also lit by a new um, lighting setup. So uh, I've been looking for like stronger lights for the kitchen for whenever I cook for uh, quite some time now. Um, I have had the Godox SL60 for a couple of years now. I mentioned that in a previous video. Um, and it is super price efficient. It pretty much did the job. But what I started realizing, especially with like British winters being dark so early and it being, you know, cloudy a lot of the times was even at the SL60's like highest capability, it still really wasn't able to light the scene as I wanted it to. So uh, today the light that I have here and then also the light that we'll be using during the video shoot so that you guys can see everything in a real world setting um, is the Godox VL200. And I had seen a lot of really excellent reviews on it on just like really how powerful and how bright um, it is. But with it being a video light, it's also quite uh, quiet as well. It's on right now, you can't really even hear it. At the end, I will try out the mochi for you guys as it's what you like and then I'll give you just like a little bit of feedback in terms of um, how I felt about uh, shooting with this guy.
looks like this. So this is the actual bit that is actually hard. So I have um, these two guys in front of me. Um, they are very, very sticky as that is what, you know, when you steam glutinous rice and tapioca starch together, they get super, super sticky. So in the past, what I have done is um, in order to cut them, I've actually just used kitchen shears. I dipped them in water and then I cut them and it really worked. Uh, well, unfortunately, I do not have kitchen shears uh, today, uh, so I have some water and a knife. Uh, I have a bunch of the Kanako here, which um, it is super, super fragrant. It reminds me actually a little bit of like peanut butter uh, powder as well. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slap it into the Kanako. I'm going to try to make the least uh, contact with this as I can. And of course, uh, somewhat useful, I think, to have the paper. Yep, that came out immediately. That's quite good. Um, and then, hopefully, this uh, this is actually coming off quite well. This was a, a very smart idea. Okay, Ooh, a little bit of sticking. It's okay. Okay, so. And I have some extra Kanako as well, just in case. So the least contact as possible with the actual mochi because it can be a nightmare. Okay, so I'm just gonna dip the knife into some water. Um, cut it into four strips. getting sticky even as we speak. So, show it to you guys. It's quite pretty actually. Can you guys see that?
Yeah, this is good, I think. Yeah, you guys can see that. Okay, so let's let's give these guys a try. Um, actually, cutting them was not too bad. I had remembered it being a very painful and sticky experience for me, but if you just dip everything in water, it seems to be okay. Um, very pretty presentation pieces as well. I could see like guests really loving this. Um, okay, so they're all the same. I'm gonna give it a try. I'll say like when when I tasted a little bit of the batter at the at the beginning, I kind of thought it would be a bit sweet. Um, so it's not it's not sweet at all. Like initially, I had thought it was gonna be really sweet, and it's not like it's sweet, but just enough. Uh, for it to be nice. I'll say the texture, texture wise, according to the recipe that I followed, I'd say it's a little bit soft. So what I do is I maybe hold back a little bit more on the tapioca starch. And then also, um, it recommended between one and a quarter cups of water and one and a half cups of water. And I would, uh, I would stay towards the one and a quarter cup of water just to keep everything a little bit more like chewy, a little bit firmer. But other than that, flavor wise is quite good. It is gently sweet. So something that just kind of tastes like, oh, like it's naturally like that. That's actually quite nice. You have like little kind of like little flecks of, of the sweet potato. So if you think of how sweet sweet potato is, this is just probably like just a little bit sweeter, but like it has that kind of like gentle sweetness to it. That's quite nice. You have the red azuki beans that kind of uh, contrasts how kind of soft and squidgy uh, this is. So you get like little lumps of that. And then like really like big, big star here is the kanako, which is the, the toasted soybean um, uh, it, that, that you've browned up because that, because that provides a, like a lot of the nuttiness and a lot of like the aroma of it. So. Uh, I actually like it a lot. There's a lot going on in terms of texture. I wasn't sure about like the whole pieces of, of, of uh, sweet potato and uh, with the skin and everything, but the texture that it adds to this is quite nice just because mochi tends to be uh, really soft. And again, just, just gently sweet. Like I really like this. Um, I would imagine if you guys like, um, I would imagine if you guys wanted to sweeten it with something a little bit more natural, like date syrup, that probably would work. Like maybe if you do like half, uh, half like raw cane sugar and then half uh, date syrup, and then just just to see how um, it would taste. Because I had done a warabi mochi recipe before in the past where I use maple syrup uh, as opposed to just sugar and it worked out really well. So I would imagine this is going to be the same for date syrup. And if you have some, you know, crunched up dates that might add uh, to this texture as well. So, so now let's talk about the VL 200 for those of you that are interested. Um, I shot with this light for two days for this recipe, probably like five, five hours um, each. And where I really thought it made a difference was, you know, during the daytime, usually there's enough light and you can get by with it. But as the shoot went later and later, that's when this guy really paid off because with the SL60, as I had mentioned before, even at full blast, it's not really able to light um, that well, it's just not a strong enough light. Like it, it, it works for majority of the time, but it's, it's just not a strong enough light. And if you guys can see, I have it now at about 70%. Um, the SL60 just wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do, to do all of that. And as the day was getting darker, this guy was really paying off. And I think number two, and it may be like the first reason why I love it so much is the color is really true uh, to life. I mean, you guys saw it with, um, with the food and how it was shot. It was entirely using, uh, using this light. And especially towards later on in the day, it was, it, there was no other ambient light involved. And so 
the light quality is really good. It mimics daylight really, really well. And that, that will pay for itself, whether you're doing photography or whether you're doing video. It, you, you can't tell and it's quite nice um, that way. Um, the other thing that I'll say is I'm using one of those globe diffusers today, one of those like balloon style diffusers. And those happen to be really nice. Like they're really nice for a backlight too, but it's nice because it, globally uh, diffuses the light. So it makes everything look really natural. Nothing is too harsh, but because it it is like a very kind of big diffuser, like light goes all over versus if you're talking about like one of those like big octagon boxes that just really like directs the light towards one thing. Um, for this one, if you don't have a strong enough light and you put a light in there and it kind of diffuses all over the place, the light that's hitting you may not be strong enough to, to light you. And so that's why you need a quite a strong light with, with kind of a balloon diffuser. That way you, you get a strong enough light, but then you also get very nice kind of light um, um, all around uh, diffused light. And I think that that's, that's really great. So one is, one is the power and then two is the quality of light, which I'm amazed um, at. And I'll put links down below to the light. The VL200, they said, had the CRI, the color rendering index of um, 96. And then the SL60 uh, had it with was it 90, I think it was 95. Um, but like for sure, I can tell this light is cleaner. Like it is very much, uh, very much true uh, to life. It, it's just very clean light. Whereas the SL60, I, I think has a tendency to be a little bit more magenta. You have to fix it in post afterwards, but this one um, is quite good, it's quite true. In terms of the, the lux and kind of like how strong um, uh, that light is, the SL60 was at, I think, 4,100 lux at one meter, whereas this guy is 7,800. So um, almost double in that, just in case if you guys wanted to know about the specs. Um, and then uh, also this guy, you can put a battery on it, which is quite nice because I hate lugging things with cords around. Um, so that's another kind of like good bonus for you. I would definitely like, because this is strong enough, I definitely recommend it for like, whether you're doing video or photography. Um, I shot a couple of photos here just using that light and it was, it was um, more than enough, which is quite good. Cause usually you, you, sometimes you have to bring in a strobe if, if things are not, you know, strong enough. But um, I think that this, this guy is really good if you turn off all the lights and, and, and whatnot. So um, yeah, so I hope you guys all um, enjoyed the, the review of this. I hope you guys all enjoyed uh, this recipe. It is very, very good. I love, I love the flavor a lot. So I hope you guys all uh, try it. I hope you guys all uh, enjoy. And yeah, I will see you guys all again next time. Okay. Hey, right, bye.